Kirua is by far the most popular character in Hunter x Hunter, and I don't think it's a coincidence that he is also one of the most mentally vulnerable characters in the series. He's cool and collected on the outside, but through his inner monologue, we know that he is often scared or anxious, sometimes to a point where it's physically debilitating. You wouldn't expect this from a boy who is honestly more powerful than our main protagonist, a boy who is the heir to his family's assassination business, and a boy who more often than not comes off as competent and honestly a little cocky. Kirua glides into the story of Hunter x Hunter on his skateboard. With his tousled hair and nonchalant attitude, he is the cool kid. And throughout the first arc of Hunter x Hunter, he's a badass assassin who's pretty much untouchable. However, this image is shattered when Irumi shows up. It's revealed that Kirua's brother, Irumi, who had been in a disguise up till that point, was assigned to fight against his little brother in the final trial of the exam. This is the moment where we first witness Kirua's vulnerability, and the scene sets up a lot of his personal inner conflict. We learn that Kirua doesn't want to be an assassin, but is afraid that his nature and upbringing means that he cannot escape this fate. Kirua wants to be friends with Gon, but he feels that he's not worthy of Gon's friendship, and doubts whether he can be a good friend to Gon. We also learn that Kirua was taught how to fight by his dad and brother, who instilled in him a philosophy to never fight an opponent you cannot beat. Therefore, Kirua was taught to be highly analytical and classify people according to whether he can kill them or not. Knowing all of this, Irumi decides to test Kirua, to see if he'll go against his own training to try to save his friend's life. Irumi threatens to kill Gong and tells Kirua that he must be his older brother in order to save his friend's life. Kirua is frozen. He can't even raise a finger. He admits defeat, and if Irumi had followed through with this threat, this would have led to Gon's death. But Irumi tells his little brother that he was just kidding. But this proves one thing, Kirua doesn't have the right to have any friends. From this point on, Kirua is a shell of himself. He kills the guy that was meant to fight Leorio and gets disqualified from the exam. And after this, he just goes home. This leads into the mini arc of the Zoldic family, where Reorio, Kurapika, and Gon go to the Zoldic family mansion to retrieve Kirua. We expect there to be many obstacles for the crew to be able to get Kirua back, but surprisingly, Kirua's father approves of his friendship with Gon and allows his son to leave. Kirua's free from his family, he doesn't have to be an assassin anymore, but this was way too easy, and we learn that Shiruba expects that his son will come to the realization that he is a true assassin in his soul and will eventually return home. But for now, Kirua is free to explore the world and go on adventures with Gon. And throughout the next arc, Kirua and Gon's relationship grows into a great friendship. And at the end of the Heavens Arena arc, Kirua accompanies Gon to Whale Island and meets Gon's adoptive mother. And on the surface, it seems like Kirua has achieved his two main goals. First, to not be an assassin anymore, and second, to become friends with Gon. So what is he going to do next? While on Whale Island, Gon and Kirua talk about their future, and Gon says his goal is to find his father, and that Kirua's goal is to find what he wants to do in life. But as the story continues, it becomes clear to the audience that Kirua has decided on a goal, and that's just to be with Gon and help him in any way he can, because Kirua feels indebted to him. He feels that he was able to leave his life as an assassin thanks to Gon, and will do anything to repay that debt. This isn't necessarily the healthiest way to have a relationship with somebody, but within their imperfect relationship, they find a balance and learn that they complement each other in many ways, particularly when it comes to their approach to combat. As mentioned earlier, Kirua is highly analytical and generally plays things safe. He is an assassin after all, meant to kill quickly and efficiently, finish the job and get paid. He knows when to fight and when to give up. Gon, on the other hand, is much less logical. His fights are often driven by emotions, and he initially has a hard time analyzing the difference in strength between himself and his opponents. But in their partnership, they discover that Gon brings the optimism and enthusiasm, whilst Kirua brings the realism. The next few arcs of Yokushin City and Grido Airando pass by, and Kirua has a few moments in which his anxiety comes back, but he's able to manage it thanks to Gon. It seems like Kirua is growing as a character, and he's less and less bothered by Irumi's comments and everything seems to be going smoothly for Kirua and Gon. But then we start the Chimera Ants arc. The opponents are stronger than 
anything they had faced before. And before long, they end up in their usual dynamic, with Gong getting emotional and wanting to charge into a fight, whilst Kirua stays cool and logical. In a particularly emotional fight, Kirua knocks Gong unconscious before he could get himself killed. Kaito actually praises Kirua for his action and tells them to run. Kirua takes himself and Gong to safety whilst abandoning Kite to fight alone. We are made to believe that this was the right move. After all, in all past fights, Kirua's rational decisions turned out to be the right choice. But then Netero, Moraru, and Nobu show up. And Moraru starts to chide Kirua for his actions. いけそうらの総領が多い少ないなんて気休めにもならねえ。勝敗なんて多いたってて当たり前。それが年でのだが、それでも100% Moraru's comments trigger Kirua's anxiety, making him question his decision. He feels guilty that he left Kaito for dead and believes himself to be a coward. But then Gon wakes up and quells Kirua's anxiety by telling his friend that he made the right call and thanking him for getting them out of that situation. Gon is optimistic that Kaito is still alive, and this leads us to the very famous Hunter Hunter quote. Kaito is あんなやつには絶対絶対に負けない。だから早く戻ろう。強くなって。カイトを助けに。So good old positive goal manages to keep Kirua's anxiety at bay for a while. But god, people just can't seem to give Kirua a break. Kirua and Gon train under Bisuke to prepare for their return to the NGL to find Kaito. But during their training, Bisuke points out Kirua's weakness. She says that Kirua is too quick to analyze the situation. He loses his will to fight the moment he senses the enemy is stronger than him. When in reality, Kirua probably would have a chance against those opponents. He underestimates himself. Bisuke tells Kirua that this is not his fault. It's the fault of the people who taught him to fight this way, and that this philosophy comes from a twisted sense of love to want to protect Kirua. She warns Kirua that his tendency to run away is dangerous, and that one day he will leave Gon for dead. And she tells him that if he can't win his fight against Shuto, he should leave Gon's side. This comes off as pretty harsh for Bisuke, but it was probably meant to be motivation for Kirua. But Kirua is totally heartbroken at the thought that he would be capable of hurting Gon. Bisuke's criticism not only tore down what Kirua thought was his strength as the rational and cautious counterpart to Gon, but it also threatened his goal to assist Gon in any way he can. Kirua starts to spiral down and his anxiety is clear in his fight against Shuto. His inner monologue is going wild and Irumi keeps popping up telling him to give up the fight. He's paralyzed and he's essentially reverted back to the end of the hunter exam. In the end, both Gong and Kirua lose their fights and are unable to go back to save Kaito. On top of that, Gon is unable to use his Nen abilities. Although Kirua promised that he would leave Gon if he lost against Shuto, he commits himself to protecting Gon while he cannot use his powers. Kirua continues to struggle with his confidence when he encounters a Chimera Ant on his own. He's totally not in the right mental space to fight, and in the beginning the battle does not go well. He continues to hear Irumi voice in his head, telling him to run away. But if he runs away, Ramoto might go after Gon. And it seems like Kirua finally has a moment of clarity. There's a flashback sequence of him and Gon, and we see Kirua's commitment to protect Gon no matter what. Maybe Kirua will finally be free. Maybe he will finally overcome his anxiety. Kirua jabs his fingers into his temple, 
and removes a needle, one of Irumi's manipulation needles. Kirua says that he feels so much better with this thing out of him and resumes to absolutely destroy Ramoto. This is meant to be a moment of triumph, but this was actually my least favorite scene from Hunter x Hunter for a very long time. The author took all this time to develop Kirua's anxieties about not being worthy of Gon's friendship and that in a moment of true crisis, he might run away and abandon his friend. Those are good enough reasons to have anxiety. Why add someone else's nen ability to the mix? I didn't like the fact that all Kirua had to do was physically remove a needle, when in reality overcoming your anxiety is so much more complex. It felt too much like a deus ex machina, because for the sake of the story we needed Kirua to become a competent fighter again, we needed him to overcome his anxiety. And it honestly did make a lot of sense with the overall story. We've known about Irumi's abilities as a manipulator, and we knew that he was very possessive of Kirua. And looking back at Irumi and Kirua's interactions in the Hunter exam arc, it seemed like it was always the intention for Irumi to have some sort of control over Kirua. So although at first I was angry about this plot device, I understood that it was the author's intention all along. And I eventually fully accepted this scene after realizing that Irumi's needle situation wasn't some deus ex machina. It wasn't the solution to solving all of Kirua's mental problems. The needle simply represented the overbearing, suffocating kind of love he experiences from his family. Removing Irumi's needle finally cut those ties. Now that he was finally free of his family, he could focus on his most important relationship his relationship with Gon. But of course, the moment Kirua is prepared to give everything to his best friend, their dynamic shifts. Gon is fighting his own internal battle, and Gon's vision narrows to simply seek revenge for Kaito. He doesn't have time to think about anyone else, he doesn't want to think about anyone else. Kirua tries his best to understand this, but he's still disappointed when Gon doesn't ask for his help to fight against Pito. And Gon, who usually thanks Kirua for staying cool-headed, who usually counts on Kirua to keep him grounded, says this. To be honest, Gon is right. Kaito is Gon's savior. Kaito is Gon's dad's friend. The reason why they're in this entire situation to start with is because of Gon's quest to find his father. In terms of the larger story, it has nothing to do with Kirua. And so Kirua's goal starts to break down. Because as much as he wants to help Gon, Gon doesn't want his help. Kirua tries to play it off like it's not a big deal, that it's just Gon being emotional again. But it really hurts him. And Kirua ends up breaking down in front of Pamu, asking her to help Gon. Because he no longer feels like he is capable of helping him. Kirua is willing to die with Gon, but Gon doesn't even realize this. Because he is so filled with rage and focused on his goals of killing Pito. In the beginning of the Chimera Ants arc, Kirua's fear was that he was not competent enough to protect Gon. That his battle tendencies would mean that he would abandon Gon. But as the arc continues, he realized that that is not his biggest fear. His biggest fear is Gon not needing him at all, and of Gon abandoning him. But unlike the needle he pulled out earlier in the arc, there's no easy solution to this particular problem. Gon goes through his dark transformation, and he is in no state to be having a heart-to-heart -heart with Kirua. And even after the fight, Gon is in a coma. Kirua does everything he can to bring Gon back, but in the meantime, he's forced to face the issues in their relationship on his own. This leads into the election arc. He was a supporting character in his other friend's adventures up till this point, and Kirua's actions in this arc still revolve around saving Gon, but he develops a new relationship outside of Gon's orbit. Kirua's mission to save Gon leads him to reconnect with his sister, Aruka, and like he did with Gon, he vows to protect her. Throughout this story, we explore Kirua's relationship with his sister, Aruka, and something that also shares the body with Aruka, called Nanika. Nanika has the ability to grant wishes, but it comes with a huge price. But we learn that Kirua is a special case. 
Kirua can request Nanika to do anything and she'll obey just because she wants to be praised by Kirua. His family sees Aruka as a tool and not as a person, but Kirua sees her as his little sister and respects her for who she is, not because of her utility. It's ironic that Kirua can't extend this kind of respect for himself. Kirua only values himself according to how useful he is to Gon. And the moment when this all clicks is after curing Gon, Kirua asks Nanika to never show herself again. Now that she's served her purpose, he wanted her to leave so that Aruka could finally live her life in her own body rather than share with Nanika. And Nanika obediently subsides. But Aruka gets angry at Kirua. How dare he tell Nanika to leave? Aruka tells Kirua to apologize to Nanika. And Kirua realizes the mistake he made. He apologizes to Nanika and asks her to stay. Because Nanika deserves to exist and be loved even if Kirua has no intention of using her for her ability in the future. When Gon wakes up from his coma, Kirua isn't there. And Kirua tells the others not to tell Gon who cured him. It's not until Gon is heading to the world tree to meet his father that we see Kirua and Aruka are with him. And it looks like they're back to their usual selves. Kirua jokes with Gon that he was pretty depressed when Gon wanted to go and fight Pito on his own. And Gon apologizes. And the fact that Kirua is able to joke about this proves that he's gone over it. And it seems like Gon and Kirua's relationship has been mended. So Kirua has overcome his final mental hurdle. These two are going to be better friends than ever before and they'll stay together forever. Right? At the end of the election arc, Kirua and Gon decide to go their separate ways. And I realize they both need this. They need some time away from each other, and especially Kirua. Kirua has shed his toxic relationship with his family, and for now he needs to leave this uneven relationship with Gon. Kirua, through his relationship with Aruka, finally understands the meaning of unconditional love. To love someone at their best and their worst, and to love someone whether they are of use to you or not. Up till this point, Kirua's self-worth was defined by whether he felt useful to Gon or not. And maybe for a while, he needs some time away from his best friend, whose approval he desperately sought. Kirua still has a lot of growing to do, and many more internal battles to fight. But I hope the next time we see him, he'll be a stronger man. Not because of his training, not because he's acquired new powers, but because he's learned to love himself.